Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Mountain Blade Bannerlords, specifically the Eagle Rising Dawn of an Empire mod, and we're going to be going over the top six Empire armors from this mod that I've picked out. So this is not a list of like the absolute best, because if you've ever played this mod, you'll probably know there's a huge variety of armor. Just way too much. It's uh, definitely what I would consider excessive. So I'm not listing these as the six best by armor value or anything. I just picked out six suits of armor that are unique, and I think they look good, and then I've ranked to those suits by their armor value. So we're going to be starting off with number six. And at number six, we have what I'm just simply calling the leather armor. You can tell it's got sort of a, uh, well, leather vibe to it, and I quite like the way it looks. So uh, this suit is made up of the uh, leather attic helm, which has a head armor of 60. Uh, then we have the invisible shoulders tier two. And so uh, one thing this mod does rather well, in my opinion, is uh, it adds things to fill up armor slots that give you armor value, even if you can't see them. Because if you take the chest armor, or I should say torso armor, which has sort of integrated shoulders into it, you don't need to add anything on and it looks complete. So I, I like the fact that this mod includes invisible armor pieces that uh, still give you that armor value as if you had something on your shoulders, but don't affect the overall aesthetic of it. So I quite like that about this mod. So yes, like I said, the invisible shoulders tier two, which give us 20 body and five arm armor. Then we have the leather musculata, which gives us 35 body armor, uh, 12 leg armor and 12 arm armor. Uh, then we have the Romans didn't wear bracers three and i like that naming convention because romans typically didn't wear bracers or at least based on all the information we have about them uh, and this is just the best variant of that and that gives us 20 arm armor then we have the bronze greaves over wrapped calige which gives us 30 leg armor i like this suit of armor i think that it looks a bit on the lighter side but it also looks rather fancy i love the attic helm style and i think that the uh brass on leather looks very cool and pairs well with the rest of it and we've uh introduced i mean this says bronze but it still has a very similar color so i think that the the leg armor matches the accents rather well and i just really like the way this one looks so the total weight for this suit of armor is 23.3 kilograms so not all that heavy and it has an average armor rating or aar of 48.5 so even though it's the lightest suit on this list it is still quite good so that is number six the leather armor all right at number five we have what i'm calling the gladiator armor now mind you this is one that i had to kind of slap together out of mostly aesthetic because it's not like we have a bunch of named pieces for it. But I think that it looks really cool, and uh, stat-wise, obviously, it's pretty dang good. So this suit of armor is made up of the Brass Feathered Gladiator Helm, which gives us 50 head armor. Then we have the Invisible Shoulders Tier 2, so the same as last time, which gives us 20 body armor and 5 arm armor. Then we have the Brass Padded Lorica Squamata, which gives us 50 body armor, 15 leg armor, and 11 arm armor. This one is probably the greatest point of contention, because a lot of times when we see your stereotypical gladiator that has, like, this type of helmet and you know, the, the one arm guard or whatever. They're not wearing a whole lot on their torso. But I think this armor piece is a very cool one, and so I wanted to use it in one of these suits of armor. It matches the color scheme, and I think it looks rather nice. So if you had a very expensive champion gladiator, you probably wouldn't want him to be bare torso. You'd probably want to protect him a little bit, and I think this, uh, this definitely does that. And like I said, it also just looks really cool, and the accents all match together. So... I think it matches rather well. For our arm armor, we have the Manica Brass Plate, which gives us 25 arm armor. And then we have the Brass Greaves, which give us 30 leg armor. So like I said, all together, definitely a very brass vibed uh, outfit with red accents. So I think that looks very, very cool. I quite like the appearance of this one. Stat wise for the Gladiator armor, we have a weight of 27.2 kilograms. So a little bit heavier than the leather armor, but an AAR or average armor rating of 51.5. So significantly better armor value. So like I said, I really like the way this one looks. It's very unique and it has that gladiator vibe to it if that's what you're going for so that's number five let's move on to number four all right so at number four we've got the centurion's armor and so a centurion was a uh, mid-level commander in a Roman legion typically I mean uh, there's a misconception that they would command 100 men uh, that's not actually true they would command what was called a century which I believe was 87 men I could have that wrong but it's it's close to 100 so I know that people assumed it was 100 based on centurion but that's not actually how many men were in there but anyway all of that aside I think this one looks really really cool it's definitely got the uh, high Roman Empire aesthetic to it so a lot of people this is what they think about when they think of you know the Roman Empire and I think it looks really good so I don't blame people for thinking that so this suit is made up of the uh, centurion gallic d helmet which gives you 50 head armor then we have the centurion's cloak which gives us 10 body armor and 5 arm armor and I like that it's a half cloak off the shoulder very roman styled there that's very cool and then we have the expensive lorica segmentata armor uh, which gives you 60 body armor 
12 leg armor and 17 arm armor. There is a specific named uh, Centurions. It could be a Lorca Squamata or maybe it was a Lorca Hamata, but it was specifically designed for it. And I liked the way it looked, but it had way inferior armor value and I wanted my Centurion to be a little bit better. And that's why I went with the Lorca Segmentata type armor for it. Uh, plus I was able to coordinate the colors to match really well with this specific piece. So that would be why I chose this for the body armor. Then we have the Manica Iron Plate and I considered using the uh, Romans don't use bracers for this one, but I do think that this looks quite nice, and considering a Centurion is still a frontline unit, or someone who will often be in combat, I figured that it made sense to give them this extra arm armor for their offhand. Then for our leg armor, we have the decorated Centurion's Greaves, which gives us 35 leg armor. All in all, like I said, I really like this one. It might be my favorite out of all the ones on this list. It's hard to make that declaration, considering all of these suits of armor made it to this list, because I thought they looked really, really good. Uh, but this one, like I said, just is that really stereotypical High Roman Empire type of look to it that I think a lot of people really, really love. So the stats for this one are a weight of 22.5 uh, kilograms, so actually lighter than the gladiator armor and the leather armor, which is interesting. But we have an AAR or average armor rating of 53.5, so uh, a small step above the gladiator armor, but definitely really, really good protection. And like I said, hard to compete with how cool that looks. So that's number four, the Centurion armor. Let's move on to number three. All right, at number three, we have what I'm just simply calling the brass auxilia armor and what i was thinking here was i wanted it to be you know auxilia themed to make it look like some sort of a non-roman citizen military troop but i wanted it to be a more high tier sort of officers variant of that so you can see we kind of went pretty fancy with it uh, with that in mind i do love the way this one looks it has one of my favorite styles of roman helmet ever on it so uh, and obviously a lesser known one too a lot of people wouldn't picture that but it's a you know famous historical example of a roman helmet and i love the way it looks so this i uh this suit is made up of the following pieces the brass heavy gallia helmet which gives us 56 head armor and like i said just looks so ridiculously cool then we have the frilled shoulder cloak which gives us 15 body armor and five arm armor we have the brass squamata with falera for the body armor and that gives us 55 body armor 22 leg armor and 20 arm armor then we have the monica brass scale for our arm armor and that gives us 25 arm armor and then we have the brass decorated greaves which give us 35 leg armor so obviously again we're going for that uh brass sort of general vibe and then we're accenting that with the brown leather and the sort of I don't know what color you'd call that I don't maybe that's mauve is that mauve I would call it red but you know that that sort of vibe to it and I think it pairs together really really well so like I said I'm going for an auxilia troop here but a commander in an auxilia unit and that's kind of the vibe that we're going for here so the stats for this one are a weight of 23.4 kilograms so again not very heavy and an AAR or average armor rating of 50 8.25 so this one has uh, several points better AAR than the Centurion even does so I quite like this one like I said uh, it's very unique but still has a very Roman vibe to it so if you're trying to play as you, you actually want to go for that full-on Roman vibe I think you can still do it and uh, stick to this brass auxilia armor so that's number three let's move on to number two all right at number two we have our Praetorian armor so a legendary commander of the Praetorian Guard the personal military unit of the emperor at least typically i really like this one i love the aesthetics of it so again this is why i say it's hard for me to pick an absolute favorite and say that it's the centurion's armor because i love the style of praetorian armor and the color scheme and everything but yeah, this one is pretty dang good, and that's why it takes the number two spot. So this suit of armor is made up of the Praetorian Attic Helm, which gives us 60 head armor. Then we have a fine shoulder cape, which gives us 10 body armor and 5 arm armor. Uh, then we have the Praetorian Griffin Musculata, which gives us 70 body armor, 25 leg armor, and 20 arm armor. And just looks ridiculously cool with sort of a lightly blued steel look to it, and then the gold or brass accents that just pop incredibly well on that darker platform there. And of course we have the light purple undertones which in this game is the closest we come to like an imperial purple vibe but then we have romans didn't wear bracers 3 for 20 arm armor and praetorian decorated greaves for 35 leg armor uh, and like i said it all goes together rather well you can tell these three pieces were designed to go together because they have the same color scheme and a very very similar design philosophy behind them so the stats for the praetorian armor are a weight of 24.1 kilograms so again still not very heavy and an aar or average armor rating of 61.25 so just ridiculously good armor you could make it even better better by re uh, replacing the fine shoulder cape with the uh the invisible shoulders that we've used on some of the other suits 
sense because it, that would give us a better armor value. But I think that the cape definitely gives it sort of a more high tier sort of vibe to it, you know, a richer, fancier type of thing. And that's why I went with this. But still, the Praetorian armor is awesome and I love the way it looks and it ranked number two because it has really, really good stats. So that is number two. Let's move on to the last one on this list at number one. And so finally at number one, we of course have to use our Emperor's armor. So this is the armor that I believe is appropriate for the Emperor of Calradia. And uh, it would obviously be then therefore an imitation of the Roman Emperor. So this suit of armor is made up of the uh, Frondorf helm, which gives us 65 head armor and has the full face mask on it and sort of the imperial laurel style crowning on it to, you know, signify nobility or imperial status. Uh, then we have the Emperor's cloak, which is kind of obvious for the suit of armor. And that gives us 10 body armor and 5 arm armor. Then we have the decorated griffin musculata, which gives us 70 body armor, 25 leg armor, and 20 arm armor. Finally, the, or not finally, but the Romans didn't wear bracers 3, which gives us 20 arm armor, and the senator's expensive greaves, which gives us 35 leg armor. So this suit of armor has a weight of 24.1 kilograms, so again, not very heavy, uh, and an AAR or average armor rating of 62.5, so just slightly higher than the Praetorian armor. And I think, honestly, it works for it. Obviously, the uh, Emperor, you want him to be pretty well protected, and he's going to be able to afford the best, and this is the best. So, that is all six of my Imperial Armors from the Eagle Rising mod uh, that I've picked out. Like I said, these aren't necessarily the best stat-wise in the game. There's a ridiculous amount of armor variety, and you can you could make ones that maybe even have an AAR as high as 70. But these are the suits that I, I built because I thought they looked really good and made sense together lore-wise, and then I just rated them based on their armor value. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful, but we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.